Okay, let's do some internet physics. If you are on the internet, and I happen to be on the internet, you find all sorts of crazy stuff. So here is a video, and you've probably seen this or something like this before, but it's still kind of funny. I mean, I can't help it. It's just funny. So this, let's just play the video. So here's a squirrel on this uh, anti-squirrel bird feeder. So when the, when the squirrel hits the bottom part of that feeder, there's a motor that starts spinning. And so here's a squirrel just trying to hang on and eventually, backwards even, uh, eventually falls off. So, I mean, I, I want to do this as a circular motion problem and, and just kind of see what we can figure out. The first thing that we need to do is to kind of, uh, you know, make some measurements from the video. So with that, I need I need something to scale this with. So here I actually found uh, that this is probably the same bird feeder and the most important thing if you want to buy it, I don't know, maybe you want to buy it, uh, is right here, 21 inches tall. So I can get this height and from the product and use that in my video analysis. And, and let's just look real quickly at a forest diagram. This is something I drew too. So we can think about what things we want to measure from the video. The, uh, so this green thing is the bird feeder. The gray blob is the squirrel spinning around in a circle and you're looking at it from the side. So it's essentially two forces. There's the downward gravitational force and the upward force at an angle from the force that the squirrel has to hold on, pulling on it. Um, it's not completely horizontal. So I want to measure how fast does it go around, one. Two, what's that, the radius of the circular orbit, which is indeed difficult because uh, if I want to use this as circular motion, the, the tail up here is in a different circular radius than the head, which is down here. So I'm just going to pick in the middle. And then I want to see if I can estimate this angle that the thing swings at and then connect it all together. So the first thing we're going to do is use this. This is Tracker Video Analysis. I don't know if you've played with this before. It's a free Java program, so there is some issues getting uh, Java to work. Um, but once you get that working, it's a free program, very powerful, very useful, and I've used it before. I've already set it up. I've already loaded the video in here. Uh, and I've... I've skipped ahead to the part that is interesting, and I've even uh, put the scale, I converted it to meters, the scale of the bird feeder, so I scaled that. And so you just do that by going up to here, let's see, put this down. So you go up to here, and then you go to uh, new calibration stick, and then you just mark the two points, and you enter the distance that it was in about 0.5 meters. Okay, so now I wanna pick, I wanna skip forward, Let's just skip forward a little bit because I think he's speeding up and I want to want to pick two things. And, and you'll notice also that the uh, the bird feeder is wobbling. So let me, eh, one more, right? Hmm, I'm looking for a good side view. How about, hmm? Okay, I think, I think I'm gonna use this. Let's go ahead and measure this angle. Not the angle that he's making with the bird feeder, but with the horizontal, with the vertical. So if I go down here to uh, new, no, I can't remember, uh, create. I think it's create. Create measuring tools. Protractor. So it's green and you can't really see it too well, but I can indeed do this. Grab that. Move this down a little bit. And then I want this vertical. I'll just do it like this. Now I'm going to have to guess. I'm kind of guessing right here where he's holding on to. Um, that's probably good enough. That says, well, it's bigger than I thought. It says 12.9 degrees. Okay, so that's the, the tilt angle. Let's use that. Now let's use this. Let's also use this for. Um, uh, to measure the time it takes to go around. So I'm gonna actually come over here and do create point mass. Now I'm going to shift click on the center of the squirrel and it marks the time and the position. Now I'm gonna fast move forward some frames until he gets to the other side. About, yeah, let's go back one. About right there and mark that. And then I'm going to uh, Move it till he gets all the way around. 
So right there, I have the time it took to go around is from 1.9 to 2.4. So that's about 0.5 seconds. So that's the, the period of rotation. Uh, and now for the distance, if I look at this, he is at x.05 uh, meters to the other side, which is 0.29. So that's going to be, let's say, 0.224. So in half of that would be the radius. So it'd be 0.12. And I'm not going to write those numbers down for you. Okay, so I, I got. I got the time, so I can get the angular frequency. I got the angle. Um, I got the radius. So let's start doing some physics equations. I'm going to switch over to paper, and let's see what happens, and see what we can figure out. OK, so here we have the situation. I kind of redrew it right here in my uh, rough sketch. There's the bird feeder, there's the squirrel, and it's spinning around that way. But one of the things that we do in physics is to kind of make a simplified version. I mean, I don't really care that the bird feeder is a cylinder. I don't really care that the squirrel has a tail and the head down there. I don't really care about that. I, I care about the basic thing. So here's the disc that's spinning. Uh, here is the center of mass of the squirrel approximately, and I'm just guessing, I don't even know. Uh, now here are the important things. What's this distance from the axis of rotation to that point? And what angle is this leaning down at? Those two things I do need to know. And those are what I got. I got those two things from the video. R of 0.1 meters, 1, 2, and the angle. And then I got the period, how long it takes to go all the way around of 0.5 seconds. That gives me an angular velocity of 12.6 radians per second. The first thing that we want to do is to draw a force diagram on the center of mass of the squirrel. So here's the squirrel. I have the gravitational force is down. And then I have this force that is the squirrel is pulling with. It's really the force from the, the bird feeder on the squirrel, but it's from the squirrel too. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually just call it a tension because in this model, it looks like a string and that's gonna be the same thing. So it's gonna be this way. And this angle is theta. And that's it. That's my x direction. That's my y direction. At this instant, I can write down my force equation. So I have the following two equations, F net x equals mass of the squirrel times acceleration the x direction, F net y equals zero. The y acceleration is zero because imagine this is moving around in a circle this way. Well, the y velocity of the squirrel does not change if it's a perfect circle. In that case, in the actual video, the squirrel does oscillate up and down, but, but for an approximation, I'm going to say it's completely horizontal. So that means that the net force in the y direction has to be zero. What about in the x direction? Well, it is indeed moving in a circle. And if it's moving in a circle, it would have an acceleration in the direction of the center of the circle. So the acceleration would be in the uh, next x direction would be negative uh, omega squared times r. And this is centripetal acceleration. Tripetal. I can never spell it without sounding that out. So that I do know that value. So let's put everything together. Let's write down. Now, the other thing. In the x direction, what force is acting in the x direction? I have a component of the tension. I have this part of the tension force in the x direction and that part in the y direction. So let's write down the x equation. It's going to be technically, I call, I call that positive x. This is going to be negative t cosine theta because, again, if this is my tension, which I don't know, the adjacent side of that triangle is going to be equal to the cosine times the hypotenuse because cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So I get negative t cosine theta, and that's it. And that would be equal to negative m omega squared r. And this negative is because at this point, it's accelerating that way, which is the negative direction. That's the direction of the center of the circle. OK, so I, I don't, what do I know in this equation? I don't really know too much. OK. So let's write down 
the y equation. Well, in the y direction, these have to add up to zero, so I get t, this is gonna be t sine theta, minus, m, e, minus mg equals zero. Okay, so what do I not know in these two equations? Or could I just see if things are working? Well, I definitely don't know t. I don't know t, I know theta, I don't know m, um, I know omega, I know r. So let's take this one and solve this for the tension. I really don't know what I'm doing here, so I'm just kind of playing around. And that's okay. We don't always have to know exactly what we're doing. Let me just rewrite these equations uh, real quickly. So I get, I'm gonna, um, let's go ahead and solve this one for t. So I'll, I'll multiply both sides by negative one and divide by cosine theta. So I get t equals m omega squared r over cosine theta. And then you can see right here, what if, um, I guess it would work. Okay. Uh, so I don't know t or m. Now let me take the y equation and solve and just rewrite it. So I get t sine theta equals mg. Now if I, I'm, I'm not gonna be able to solve for the mass. Okay, uh, I, if, I, if I estimate the mass, because let's see what happens. If I plug this into here, I get m omega squared r over cosine theta sine theta equals mg, and the mass is canceled. So I can't, I can't do my normal substitution where I solve for one and, and plug it into the other and, and then figure everything out. I can't do that. Um, one thing I could do is solve for g. Okay, that's the only thing I could solve for. And since I measured these things, I could indeed do that, but I'm not going to. What I would more like to do is to find the tension, but I'm gonna to have to estimate the mass. So let's say the mass of the um, squirrel is around, let's say 0.5 kilograms. Then I can put it in up here or there and find the tension. And I would actually solve it right here. So let's say T equals mg over sine theta. And that would give me the tension. Okay. One thing I do want to point out is it's impossible for this squirrel to be like this. For here's the, the disc and for the squirrel to be straight out with the angle of zero. Because what happens if this angle is zero? Then I get sine of zero is zero. And so what would the tension have to be in order to balance the weight? It had to be in, infinite. And so that's not, not gonna happen. Okay, so, but that's your basic squirrel problem for circular motion. And you can see how you can get data from a video.